Hey guys, uh, top of the morning to you, and uh, I believe it's about 6.30 here, here we go with the street noise coming through, um, we're getting the equipment put up today, uh, or, or getting some of the equipment put up today, uh, We've got, uh, I'm going to have Joe's speed bag put on a different frame. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the speed bag. Uh, I, I can't remember when, but several years ago, uh, well, years prior to that, people quit using the speed bag. They see no use in it. Uh, it. It's more work than the benefits from it. I mean, I've heard it all, which is not true. And then a few years ago, four or five years ago, uh, Manny Pacquiao's they were doing the pre-fight show, and he was showing, hey, we don't, uh, you know, Manny likes hitting the speed bag in a conventional way uh, but I don't like that you should do it this way and oh my gosh I forget the guy's name but you'll know who I'm talking about the guy that wears the glasses he has Parkinson's and uh, it's messed up pretty bad but hey man, he's a good trainer uh, he's a great trainer he's the trainer of champions and anyway, uh, he was talking about hitting these hooks and backing off this bag. And there, there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can uh, <coughs> do what I call torpedo punching on the uh, speed bag as well, where you stand off the bag and maybe give a one and then you're moving and then give a two and then come around and give a hook every now and again. But what, what people aren't realizing is that the ladder that I just explained to you is the con conventional way. That is the old conventional way. So, we're, but anyway, I'm going to get a new frame for that speed bag. I want to talk about the speed bag for a couple of minutes here. Uh, I truly believe in the speed bag. And, uh, I'll put a boy on a speed bag, three minute rounds, just going, 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 going. Uh, try to hit seven, eight, or nine, or ten minutes even of it. And trust you, me, the speed bag, as you're sitting there and them shoulders are burning and burning and burning, it's creating all the stuff that goes on in the muscles that when you recuperate from that, I don't think I'd do a speed bag every day, although it's a light thing, uh, that m maybe three times a week, every other day, if you're working seven days uh, or six days. Um, but it builds shoulder strength and it'll help you keep them hands up and, and uh, it'll help you with the strength of your punches as well. So if you've got a speed bag or access to one, uh, use it. Just use it. Uh, use it religiously. And especially if you're building strength, uh, use it how you would call conventional old school way today and just sit there and get your rhythm going. And the, the, the key is to just keep going. And after you're doing it, trust me, one minute on it and you, you start burning. And that's working you and it's building uh, a lot of stuff that's going on that will help even increase your punching power. It'll help your timing. I mean, it just helps you all the way around. It'll help your stamina. And the punching power stamina because of shoulder strength stamina and uh, timing 
and you'll be surprised. You get on that speed bag, uh, if you hit it and then have to wait and hit it again, do what you have to do. Take your time to master the speed bag, and in time, it'll work. And a good, good thing, uh, let me tell you, if you boys are just now contemplating and do get on the speed bag, uh, you know, maybe boom, 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 and then you get hung up. Boom, boom, you get hung up. That's okay. Stay on it two or three, five minutes doing just that. And when you go to sleep at night, you think about that speed bag as you're trying to drift off. And you'll wake up in the morning and the next day something, a remarkable thing is going to happen. A God-given gift is going to take place. As you do that, uh, when you go to sleep, something works in your brain that helps you get that timing better. And you'll just shoot up. You start out, bam, oh, I can't hit this thing. Two or three weeks, you'll be, or two or three days even, you'll just be da 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 and rolling on along with it. So take everything like that. Just do what you can. You know, if you can only do one pull-up, do the one pull-up. Then go back in a little while and do one more. Then go back in a little while and do one more. Before you know it, you're doing 20 or 30 of them, see? That's how you do it. Nobody's talking about this stuff. Hardly anyone. And you just start, and the thing you're weakest in, you'll be the strongest in. That's how this thing works. If you give thought to it and apply it right to how it's going to work for your body and for your mind, because the uh, Lord made us all different. We're all different. No two men are the exact same. Uh, there's differences in every single of the seven billion of us, or six billion, on the planet. So uh, you have to keep that in mind, too. Uh, so we want to send much love to everybody. We hope we can get this new frame constructed pretty quickly for the speed bag. Uh, and it's a problem a lot of people have. You put the bag up and you end up having to put weights on it. You just get some vibration. And I need something really that's going to work. And I have some great ideas from bags that I've been on years and years ago. That there was no moving these bags. I'm going to try to get this man. And he's, he's really good to construct me a... Uh, something to mount the speed bag to where it, there's no vibration in it or as minimal as possible. The heavy bag, I'm going to put that, uh, Joe's about beat this old sport bag to death. The good bags, very expensive here. It's a good mark, uh, mark of the product for here. Uh, he's about got it all softened up, but I'm going to put that up first and wait a while, let him get back into the swing of things and try to get him a bigger, uh, heavier bag, but I'm a little caught there because I want to make sure it's something that will hold to the arm that we have coming out on the, on the wall. Uh, the ceiling in there in that gym is uh, 18 or 20 foot ceiling, so I don't want something hanging by a chain like that. I'd have to go get a big frame and affix the bag to a frame if I want to hang it from the, uh, the top down instead of the uh, arm coming out and hanging from that. So, uh, and I'll do that. It'll just take a little bit of time. And then hopefully we'll get the reflex bag up there today too and uh, get back into the swing of things. Day starting off great. My lovely wife makes me a cup of coffee and then we find out the milk is spoiled. And uh, typically when a day starts off kind of like that, it ends up getting better as the day goes along. So... I learned to look at the positive on things like that. 
And the positive is we've got a store right across the street from where we live. And you can just walk over there at any time and get milk or things you need. It's another thing I want to talk about quickly. This is going to turn into a little bit of a video here. Um, I want to talk about nutrition in, uh, in sport today. I want to talk about why athletes in my dad's day were tougher than athletes in my day. Uh, why athletes of my day are tougher than athletes in your day. Uh, I truly believe, and the science shows, uh, as an example, I'll use American football. Or you could use uh, world football as well. Uh, you know, you got people that are running, they're exerting, and they're falling down dead with heart attacks. You got people that just simply can't go no more. And one thing I've noticed with the modern athlete, uh, as opposed to us, the, the athlete, the young boy of today, and young men of today, uh, we ingested more water in, in two different ways. Uh, now, of course, if, you, if you're sparring uh, or you're in competition, you, get, you got to really limit your water because it will come back up and it'll make you sick. Uh, but I'm talking about general training here. Uh, and it could be for any sport, baseball, football, basketball, boxing. Uh, number one, we ingested more water during the day. Uh, I wasn't a huge water drinker, but I was born and raised in the south of the United States. And uh, we drank a, a lot of tea, a lot of iced tea. Um which probably wasn't beneficial, but I'll guarantee you it was a lot better uh, because of the caffeine will dehydrate you in the, in the tea. Uh, but we drank a lot of Kool-Aid and things like that. And, uh, and then we drank a lot of water. Um, back in my day, uh, getting a soda was more of a luxury. Today, it's just get up, the kids will get up drinking <clears throat> soda from morning to night and they're drinking something crazy or these energy drinks and things like that uh, we, we were getting a lot of water a lot of water and uh, kids today aren't and even though kids today aren't, aren't getting enough water uh, when they are working out, they're not ingesting enough water, I'm noticing. You know, uh, and there are moments when you need to take the water intake and keep going. And there are moments, as long as you don't overdo it, it is not going to make you sick. And I feel like maybe it's making this generation of athlete more sick uh, if they ingest more water while they're working and got their routine going to, as opposed to us because we were drinking water all day you know, constantly and uh, so I think them not drinking water you guys not drinking water throughout the day is hampering you that even when you're training you're not ingesting enough water and you're not getting as good workouts the other thing is the food intake. Uh, back when I was a kid, um, uh, yeah, we had McDonald's way back then, by the way. We had Burger Kings and Wendy's and all these things. Uh, and we ate them too. And we loved them. And we enjoyed them. But we, it was more of a luxury to us there again. Uh, Kids today, mom and dad, ain't got a dime. 
yet they'll go out here and be able to spend 70 or $100 a day getting uh, fast food and junk foods for the kids. And that, I am convinced as well, is hampering today's athletes. And let me give you an example. You're a kid, you grew up eating unhealthy, you, a lot of junk food, a lot of fast food, uh, too much sugar, uh, too much of this or that, this, all these bad things. And uh, you say, I'm going to clean it up. And, but you can't just clean it up like that. Uh, uh, or you cut down to 30%. You still got more intake of the junk food than yesteryear athletes did and uh, fast food. So it's a tricky business, and I believe that's why these athletes are not doing as well. Um, I keep harping on the endurance part of it. And uh, the average guy is saying, well, you know, conserve here, conserve there. It's about conserving the energy. And we're not focusing on that so much. Uh, uh, we're lucky up in this house, uh, even uh, when my wife is teaching and pulling overtime, she makes sure or I make sure that we got good, healthy meals here. And we're so lucky because we get to, uh, they'll put a cow down, uh, butcher the cow up. It goes directly to the local stores we have around here and then we purchase it. And there's not as many preservatives and things like that. I've even noticed that bananas here uh, whole different tastes. Uh, fruits and vegetables here whole different taste uh, than in North America. I know Europe is getting more healthy with what they're doing. They are starting to label all these products. It's got all this junk in it. Uh, they're banning a lot of chemicals like such as chemicals in toothpaste and things like that which is so very important, but we, and especially to you, you young trainers out here, you have to know that you, you athlete, and probably yourself as well, uh, grew up in a different world. Uh, things may look like you're doing them better today, but, uh, and you probably are, because as time goes on, people can perfect sport, uh, Mathematics, science, uh, all sorts of things can be better perfected in time. However, uh, the endurance part is not being perfected. Uh, you see it on a National Football League field. You, you see it in the Major League Baseball uh, game, uh, NBA, National Basketball Association. Um, the, the athlete of today is just being chemicaled all up and it takes time to get these chemicals out. And then when you start really vigorously working on it, you're stuck with where do I go get the products that doesn't have all these chemicals in it. So it's a very difficult process today and very expensive. Uh, that's why these very wealthy people that really know what they're doing, uh, live to be 90 and 100 years old and the rest of us really don't don't have that in our mind to live that long uh, they are eating the cleanest chemical free preservative free foods that money can buy and it's very expensive but try to look at options for your athletes and for yourself to get healthy food in you uh, you have to do your homework you have to figure out you know, how do I find out what chemicals in this or in this? Uh, grace uh, fed cattle as opposed to grain fed and things like that. And uh, boy, you can get yourself really healthy and you'll know it because you get all healthy and then you do like me and Joe, go out here and get a Domino's or Pizza Hut pizza and then you're sick for three or four days because you got the chemicals in you and 
What you don't realize is you're sick like that every day, even though you're not feeling sick when you got that just constantly going through your system and your body. So good luck with that, guys. Uh, we love you, and we want what's best for you. Uh, we, I'm going to take a page out of Danny Christie's book. We love our haters. Uh, because without you, uh, we really don't know if we're doing that good or not. But with you, we damn sure know we're doing very good. So we appreciate you as much as the next fellow that we really like. So, and we like you too. We like our haters too. So may the good Lord bless you guys. Remember, if he's knocking on that door, take that answer, especially if your life's in turmoil or, uh, you like me, I used to be a raging lunatic drinker. Uh, uh, you may have a problem like that. You may have other problems because uh, there are so many problems to have. But when that knock comes, try your best to stop whatever wrong you're doing. Answer that knock at the door of your heart. And uh, trust me, it might take some time, but. Your life will change if you open that door for the king of the king of the kings and the Lord of the Lord of the Lords. And there ain't but one. His name is Jesus Christ. And that's where we stand as imperfect as we are up in this house. And I want to try to make sure I mention that in all these videos that I can remember to mention it in because I wouldn't be standing here with without his grace today. So... Work on you getting our equipment set up. Work on your uh, diets. Uh, start utilizing speed bags if you got them in your gym. Uh, if you can purchase one, they're not all that expensive in the United States. Uh, so I assume probably that they're not so expensive in Europe. They're very expensive here. Uh, but if you can get your hands on one or have one in the gym, especially if you're going in a gym, and you're not utilizing, and, and they got two or three or six, get on those speed bags. Devote 10 minutes to it. When If you go to the gym six days a week, give three days to uh, take 10 minutes to be hitting that speed bag, 15 or 20 even. You'll be the better for it, trust me. It's nothing... Uh, non-beneficial about a speed bag not one thing is non beneficial about a speed bag uh, the benefits are endless for using a speed bag so if you got access to them young athlete use them if you're a young trainer let your athlete get on them encourage it you'll see the results quickly God's blessings to all all of you and thank you for watching this video